The situation in Egypt is that there is a dictatorship exists since 1952, and uh, this dictatorship managed to survive hard times. They managed to survive the fall of the Soviet Union, and they managed to survive even the the uh, protests, mass protests, and, and uprisings in 2011. Um, and sadly, because of the, the regional situation in the Middle East, the rise of Islamism and terrorism, and the, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, the military elite in Egypt, they managed to, to take some privilege from this situation, from these situations and, and somehow managed to continue to exist in power. And of course, this doesn't open any doors for stability in the country as long as the economy is, 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 is not in a good condition and the society lacks basic individual and, and uh, collective freedoms. Uh, so there, are, there will be continuous protests and unsatisfaction from the people towards their government. and. Yeah, so Egypt is kind of stuck in this situation in which Democrats are not able to overthrow the democracy and uh, oh, the Democrats are not able to overthrow the dictatorship and the dictatorship is unable to contain the democratic uh, movement. First, first by two members in my movement and second to, to uh, online activists who, who uh, are continuously uh, publish and write about their own activism online because part of the activism is, is publicity and campaigning and you have to inform other people about what you are doing and try to convince them to join your cause and so it's it's part of our what we do as activists is to somehow tell what we are doing I like other activists we use every possible tool uh, to, to get our message uh, reached. Uh, so I use either Blogger, uh, either uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and other uh, media outlet or uh, internet services to, to somehow reach different audience and uh, try to make our message through. Yes, it took, it took some privilege from, from dictatorships. So in, in the past, uh, the governments controlled what people know and what people can know through newspapers or through the official TV and official radio stations. But now uh, there are hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of bloggers and, and people on Twitter uh, who broadcast information and pictures uh, in, in the same time without censorship from the government. Uh, of course, the government can, can arrest people later or, or sue them and take them to courts. Uh, but that the government lost a huge power in controlling what people can know and what people can't know. To a certain degree, yes. Uh, I think that new generations are not satisfied by lots of international uh, matters, either the lack of freedom in lots of countries, including uh, Egypt and Saudi Arabia, Iran, and several countries in the region, and of course the continuity of, of several conflicts. Uh, it's either in, in, with, uh, in Cuba and in, in the United States, or Israel and Palestine, or Iran and, and um, Sunni countries, and, and so on. So I think young generations who didn't participate in, in making these problems are trying to use the tools of, of our age to, to try to make a change or to make a difference or somehow we expect to live somehow long in this planet so we are trying to make it um, suitable for living in it. It is not registered, we are not allowed to be registered in Egypt. Uh, normal service or no to compulsory military service is the first peace movement in Egypt and the first anti militarist movement in Egypt. Uh, I started it in 2009, uh, that's five years ago or a bit more, uh, and the goal is to, first, the first goal is to abolish the compulsory military service in Egypt and replace it by uh, an unobligatory system. Uh, but this, uh, the, the movement also care about all the other topics related to the relation between the military and, and state, including um, the military rules, the military tribunals, uh, the military interve intervention economy, the military intervention in politics, uh, the role of, of Egyptian secret services in, in locally and internationally, uh, either damaging Egypt's uh, foreign relations with other countries or making a propaganda campaigns against whatever countries according to political uh, situations. Uh, we, we speak, we focus also on, on abuses inside the military. It's either recruits being killed or abused in, inside the army. 
And of course, we try to communicate with other peace movements in the, re in the region, trying to build peaceful communication or somehow build the network uh, in action between peace movements in, in the region. Uh, mostly through the internet, uh, but also we, we arrange uh, meetings uh, between our members and uh, sometimes we visit each other country. I, I was in Israel uh, in 2012 and I met peace activists there and, and then I met other people in, in Berlin and sometimes we make uh, meetings either in Cairo or in Cyprus. So sometimes we are able to meet physically, but of course it costs a lot and it needs too much preparation, but the internet is, is valid all the time. There are, of course, huge restrictions. So for me to get the visa to Israel, it took a bit of time and lots of communications, and not everyone is, is that lucky to be able to get a visa. Uh, for Israelis, they are not allowed to visit several countries in the, uh, because they are considered in Israeli law as, as enemy states. And, and, um, and there are lots of countries that don't recognize the Israeli passport, so Israelis can't enter these countries, and so on for other countries. They consider Israel as an enemy, so citizens of these countries are not allowed to, to visit Israel. So, of course, there is um, restriction in movement to a certain degree. Uh, maybe it's easier between Egyptians and Israelis because we have a peace treaty between the both countries. Uh, but usually the easiest way is to meet in a third country, so it's usually Cyprus or any country in the European Union. It is somehow uh, easier for every side to, to get a visa and, and to pass easily from the security. Um, well, Egypt is a big country. We are speaking about 80 to 90 million people living there. Uh, so I can't say that they, they have one direction or one perspective. There are different groups. There are a group of people who think that is the right way is, is to build or to restore Arabic nationalism and, and, and to restore the ban Arabic uh, or ban Arabism ideology. There are some other people who think that the, the solution is, is in adopting conservative Islamic uh, approach in our life and that our problem is, is about that we are not faithful enough to God. There are some people, including myself, believe in, in, in liberal ideas and freeing individuals and limiting the state intervention in, in political and social life, individual and social life. And, and I believe in, in, in market economy and we feel that this way is, is a way to, to solve it. There are some other people who, who feel that uh, taking more care of workers and, and labor rights will, is the way forward. So I, I, we are different groups and there are even apolitical, or I don't know how to discover, to describe them, people who just want to make a change, but they don't really have a political vision and they don't know really what, what should be done, but they know that the situation is bad and it has to be changed, but they don't know what what needs to be changed or and how it should be changed. So it's, it's somehow chaotic and the government somehow is, has to, to be blamed for this situation because of the lack of freedom of organization and, and lack of political freedoms. So usually when people are allowed to organize themselves and build strong organizations, um, political idea, uh, ideas get mature and get developed in society and, and society somehow realize what, what is the right decision or what the society wants to do. But when, when the society lacks the, the freedom of association and freedom of assembly, uh, ideas doesn't develop much in society. And somehow that leads to more politically chaotic situations like this, the recent situation now. Well, it, it's not black and white. Uh, so when I was in jail, I received a huge amount of support either from, from Europe or from, from United States and from other countries, of course, or I'm speaking about citizens. Uh, so there are a group of peace activists in Germany and people who are interested in the Middle East who are interested in supporting uh, actors interested in peace and democracy like myself. Um, but somehow I sense that in, in, in democracy in general, uh, by say uh, uh, Europe and United States and Canada, Israel, there is uh, some kind of condition of isolationism that somehow society feels that we had enough trouble maybe after the economic crisis and somehow they know less about other societies so they also maybe they, there is a fear from going to a second war or to be involved in a long-term war so in situations in ukraine in in syria in egypt uh, democratic countries have been cautious and not willing to support 
either side or somehow to keep uh, neutral ties with both Democrats and, and the dictatorship. Uh, and of course, that, that has been a disappointment to, to all Democrats, including myself. And I think also it, it was an, uh, somehow an embarrassment, especially after the last coup in Egypt nearly a year, a year ago, uh, when the, um, the African Union uh, stopped uh, or seized, um, halted the membership of Egypt because after the military coup, uh, and they didn't accept to have an undemocratic government in, in the African Union. But at the same time, the Europe and the United States, they kept their ties with the new government and they kept even uh, giving the aid and sometimes weapon to the new government. Uh, so it, it is disappointing to see that the African Union care about democracy in Egypt more than the European Union. Well, first, globalization is the reason I, I study in Germany and I'm speaking to you in English. Um, somehow, the information technology and the transportation technology managed to decrease the distance between people from different cultures and different countries and enable uh, more communication between them, either in a positive way or a negative way. Uh, and people are able to do business or to look for a job in, in, in whatever country and, and build networks with people from different countries. I think that's, that's positive. Uh, I think people are able to, to communicate ideas, new ideas, and, and somehow that give um, an opportunity to, to evolution of ideas and reaching better ideas and somehow uh, n new technologies move faster. Um, I believe some groups of, um, have economic interests which contradict with, with globalization, either workers or some local businessmen who are unable to go for international competition. Um, yeah, I, I, I understand if they want to try to defend their, their personal interests, but I think the, the interest of the collective humanity is, is more with, with communication and, and globalization and um, removing borders. And to be honest, I'm not that much fan of borders and visas and uh, border control and, and these kind of stuff. I think it, it, it is not natural. It restricts people uh, natural movement and even immigration. Uh, and, and, and I don't think that that produce any positive um, well, to, to be in better, better words, I think in a society which have less restrictions on borders, either in transportation of goods or even or movement of individuals for tourism or for business, I think that's positive for any society. Uh, well, I'm, I, I, I started working on my autobiography and somehow I need, I feel that there are Lots I need to tell about my prison experience, about my, my visit to Israel, about my political activism before the revolution and somehow to explain how it happened because it, it just didn't start from nothing. There had been work for, for years before by, by thousands of activists in the country. So somehow I'm, I'm working for the next five months or six months on my biography and I hope it gets published next, next year maybe.